what is, what's it been like out, out on the field the first five days, getting to work with your guys and, and finally getting a chance to uh, work on the grass with them? Been awesome. We've had really two months leading up of working the indoor where it's just a taste of it, actually getting to go do it. Really, once pads go on, get to feel it for real. It's been awesome. What, what have you seen out of Ethan Davis through the, the first week, four or five practices that, you know, gives you hope that maybe he can help you guys this fall? Man, I think just starting off athletically, he's really unique. Got a chance to be a really special player. I think as far as coming off a shoulder and really not having spent a whole lot of time in the box in high school, like really impressed with where he's at right now. Do think got a long way to go and that as days keep adding and more wrinkles start coming, he's got to focus and continue to lock into the details, but it's been really good so far. Is, uh, is McAllen that similar enough to Princeton that you could plug him in and just do what Princeton's role is, or is he different? Yeah, I think every guy's a little unique. Um, he's certainly got enough wiggle to do some of the things that Princeton did. Um, similar to E, just playing the offense, it's early for him too. So really just being able to operate before really designing stuff for him, but athletically for sure in space, he can fill that role. Uh, coach, being a, a first-year position coach, how much has it helped having a guy like Jacob Warren in that room? Oh, it's all, I've said it before, but he really is like another coach for us. And the guy that shoot when I'm watching the guy that's going, his guy's coming off the field, he's grabbing him. Hey, see this or hey, understand like that was good. But like he's he's another coach for us. Coach, how would you describe your coaching style? You seem like a high energy guy. That's why I asked that. Yeah, I mean, I think you got to bring juice, but at the same time, I think being able to really process what happened, give feedback where it's not a million things all at the same time, but actually letting them play where we're different too is, uh, you know, whistle to snap happens so fast so you don't really get to coach between the play. So as drives are going on, you think, okay, well, I want to tell them this about this play. I want to tell them this about this play. And then kind of debrief with them on the back end when you come over the sideline. By that point, I think you get a little bit of time to, one, process it, really think about what you're telling them, but also emotionally cool down where you can give them the information in a way that is easier for them to process. As you've stepped into this new role, kind of what, are, what have these first few practices been like for you as you step into your new role? Just a lot of fun, honestly. There's stuff we got to get better at, and I think today took a step, which was positive, but... Shoot, this is the best part of my day for sure is being out there. So it's been fun to be back. Back here, Coach. Can you take us into your relationship with Coach Ellerby and the rest of the coaches on offense that you need to be in the in sync with? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously played for him in college. He's like another dad to me. Um, a guy that's super open, really challenges just is this the right way to do things. At the same time, hyper detailed where – if this is what we were decide we're going to do, like what's all the little nuance to it as a mentor, as a, a friend, as a guy that's like that. I mean, I can't say enough about him, but really the entire offensive staff is a family. I know it's cliche, but I've known these guys for a long time and uh, it's cool to be able to go work with them every day. Alec, going back to McAllen, obviously he's coming in from a different offense. You guys do a lot, tight ends have to process a lot and process it quickly. How is he sort of handling that process of dealing with the tempo, knowing where he needs to go and, and doing it all very quickly? He's been awesome. He's a smart kid and cares at a really high level. He's been doing everything we've asked him to do. It's something that playing in this offense is unique. There is a little bit of a learning curve. And I think for our guys, when it clicks, it really does click. For him, I think he wants it to be perfect right now. It's not going to be being able to Shoot, if I make a mistake, put it aside, play the next one. Like, that is something that he's got to continue to grow at. But um, he's a really smart kid and works his ass off. So, be really good. The two years under Hop, it's been two tight ends, at least in the passing game, Princeton and, and Jacob. Is that, is that on purpose? Is it, can this work with just one guy all the time? Can it work with three guys? How does that, what determines that? Ideally, you'd have three because <laughs> We don't really sub a whole lot in drives. So having guys that can roll, having guys that can spell each other, I think, yeah, it makes it really tough if you don't have two. Um, think about when we were at the last place, we usually had three guys that could really roll, and that's ideally what we've got. Vincent 
this may be harder not having big numbers at tight end, but how important is it to not be predictable based on personnel and what you guys are, are going to do uh, at the tight end position off, on offense? Yeah, I think, I mean, we played in 11 personnel, one tight end, one running back. We probably played in that 80, 90 percent of last year and normal downs is almost exclusively that. So I think, so this is how we operate. The way we use our tight ends, they're out in space, they're in the core, they're in line. I think whether you're playing with one, two, or none, we can be pretty, uh, we can hide what we're doing pretty well. Where is Jacob Bourne developing most in his leadership and in his skill set so far? Yeah, leadership, I think he's just got to become more comfortable being vocal. I think um, he's such a pro with just the way he approaches every day. But now understanding, like, you've earned the respect of the guys in the room. Continue to push leadership. Continue to be vocal with it. Um, don't always have to be a rah-rah guy. But when you see something going wrong, not being afraid to step up and fix it. Um, as far as on the field, I think, one, just reducing pad level in general. Um, there are a couple things run game-wise to clean up. And then just doing something when the ball's in his hand. I think that's been a huge emphasis for him this spring. Yeah, that's a little bit of what I was going to ask, too, about Warren in terms of getting him, I guess, more involved in the passing game. Last season, it seemed like there were a lot of plays that were maybe sort of designed to go to him, and for whatever reason, something broke down or didn't work out. How much of, of that frustrated him, if at all, and how do you get him more involved in the passing game? I think, one, he's as unselfish of a guy as we got in the program. I think there's times where, for sure, stuff was designed to go to him that didn't necessarily play out like that. The beauty of our offense, too, is that there's options all across the board. It's not just one guy that's getting a target. Sometimes those targets are something that's intentional. Hey, we want to do this. But um, as a whole, I think those are really earned and something that, as he continues to get better this spring, he'll see more of those. Thanks, guys.